Same as before. <laughs> Joker. Welcome back everyone to one of the final videos in the marathon and we are looking at Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai and first before we get into things this is going to be the structure of the video as again I've got my friend William here to discuss the film and basically what we're going to do is we're going to do an intro to the film, the plot, uh, talk a bit about the director, give some general thoughts on the film and also talk about the actual steelbook as well and then we'll go into the discussion for people who have seen the film so keep in mind that there will be spoilers at that point, continue watching if you want, up to you of course. But, um, yeah, so let's get started on the plot of the film. Let's get started on the plot then, indeed. And The Seven Samurai, as a story, essentially starts off when we're overlooking a village. And what then takes place is a scouting band, the group have seen the village and then plan to go and essentially take it over for the harvest. They decide to wait. And in the meanwhile of this this plan that they're creating on this hillside overlooking the village, one of the actual villagers had been out and had heard it. Obviously then rushing back to the village in dismay, saying, you know, that the bandits are gonna come and, and, and they're gonna go and kill us, kill our children, cut our heads off, all that charade. So, in order to counteract these bandits, they wanna do the impossible, as an old wise man kind of suggested to them, and that is the hire samurai in order to protect the village which wasn't so much of an easy task was it to get no. seven together <laughs> no and um, basically that, that's what the film follows you know the first mm. hour or whatever of the film is them journeying to of course gather the samurai and eventually coming back and trying to fight off bandits or whatever so that is the plot of the film really it, there, it's when you describe the film you do describe the entire film but it's certainly mm. not spoilers at all because the experience you're in for it's it's mm. still unexpected. I mean, you get, you're told the general premise of it, but it's really once you get to see the film that it unfolds. Um, so really, the first thing we talk about is just a general re reaction to the film and um, just how influential and, and great a film it is. The reason it's lived on so long, sixty-one years on. It is. It's it's some it's some film to see. It it never gets old. It's one of the ones you can. It's a classic. You know, it's certified classic. You can kind of it's so accessible as well. You can go back and see it and you know you, you watch it again you find something new I mean for both of us this is our second time seeing it and it certainly doesn't see you know feel that way because there's so much different elements you can kind of take from the film on second view and on third view up to you know how many times you want to see it I think it's just it certainly is a classic and it goes beyond you know just a typical samurai film it has so much more depth to it you know and that kind of coincides with you know Kurosawa style Certainly, yeah, and in terms of being accessible, this is a, this is his longest film, uh, clocking in at three hours and twenty five minutes, including the intermission time. So that's near three and a half hours, and you just don't feel it going through. And uh, lots of people, when they come to Kurosawa, this is actually usually the first film they come to, and it's probably his most well known, next to Rashomon, in terms of people starting on it to explore his work. Uh, it's his most popular in general. Um, so the film came out in nineteen fifty four. And there's few films like it before it, and that's why it's held up so it's held up so highly today. I mean, it's number seven or something on the IMDb list, and that is you know not just by rank uh, rating, it's also by how many people have seen it. Also, you know how many ratings have been given to it, Certainly. and it deserves its position up there. It's surprising to see that set up there with some of the more mainstream films and you know, Godfather and everything, and it does show how well received the film is all this time later and it is kind of timeless and we'll talk we'll get into detail about mm. the timeless themes and Kurosawa himself later on in the video um, so any other general thoughts on the film as a whole 
I think I think it really does deserve its critical acclaim that it gets and you know you watch a lot of interviews with different directors and and you know most times you know you might you might see you know Kurosawa's name be brought up and especially this film in particular because you're right about it being sort of the the opening film for some people to you know go on to see his work which is true and I think it does deserve that I think it can be at the forefront not just because it's you know it's his most accessible work but also because in terms of the story as a whole it's a it's a fantastic story you know to bite into and to, and to watch again and it's, it's something you, know, you want to recommend once you you know initially finish it and it sort of has that effect you know where you, know, you gotta see more people have to see it it's one of those it's, it's that's an essential an avoidable classic yeah yeah it certainly see. is I mean if you're watching this and you haven't actually seen an Akira Kurosawa film before go do it that's probably, <laughs> it's probably the best you're gonna get um, mm. definitely a good one to start on I mean mm. I don't think personally it's his best film lots of people mm. do after seeing all his films but um, it's certainly a top five it's an absolute it's a masterpiece in its own right because it's way way ahead of its time 1954 Definitely. the camera work is so dynamic in it and everything um, for its time it's very it's just unbelievable the thing that's in Japan um, definitely rivaling Hollywood it's films time. it's just just the way everything's put together it's just fantastic it really is and if you haven't seen a Japanese film again start with that one moving on then to the blu-ray itself and um, what a fine release it is it is sitting right here on a little pedestal what a fine edition it is from BFI. Originally, um, I saw this on the DVD version, the BFI release, which was really good print quality and stuff. I didn't see much of an improvement here, but still, the image looks great. And this edition is just great. A lovely steel book indeed. Um, what do you think of it? Just looking at it. I love its simplicity in the artwork. There's a sword Definitely. in the back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and then you've got them on the front yeah. as well. And the inside cover is just it's as nice great. Character. Yeah, um, it's right there. Take the desk out as well. You see my Fune there, the classic image yeah. of my Fune. Iconic. Just a very iconic picture in there. Mm. And it is, it's just nice and elegant. And in terms of what's on the steel book as well, this is still, it's, I got it for about £11. I think you can still find it now under £15. But again, it's starting to get rarer and rarer because it's, it's a steel book. Um, I came with a booklet as well, which has some essays in here by. Philip Camp, who seems to be like an expert on Kurosawa, and he's done other little things for BFI. And there's also The Art of Kurosawa, which I haven't watched yet, it says here inside. It's a little mini documentary, which I look forward to seeing. It's kind of about Kurosawa's films and what he brought to this, what brought to cinema. Uh, Tony Raines, he done some, uh, if you've seen the previous videos in the marathon, I've talked, his name's come up before. Uh, he did some videos for Masters of Cinema, so it seems he's quite active as well in terms of promoting films and talking about them. But the booklet's nice as well, got a nice front cover image and everything, and highly recommend buying this steelbook and just buying it at all. It's a really great release. Now, moving on to the actual discussion. Like I said, this will be full of spoilers as we'll talk about specific moments and scenes in the film and whatever else we bring up. So, leave now or forever hold your peace. Now, the first point that I would like to bring up is basically why the film is so acclaimed and why it's held up so highly. I mean, to start with, there's a lot to start yeah, with. There is a lot. There's a lot to say for the reason why it has such a great, you know, critical acclaim and why it is even so high up in the IMDb list. And I think a good starting point is to discuss, you know, coming off the film, you know, having great first impressions of it, and then sort of having the power of it being a foreign film, especially so ahead of its time, I think there's sort of no other alternative for it but to get that praise that they deserve because it was, you know, groundbreaking for its time, especially in that influence of what it did make. I mean, you know, when I see modern things such as, you know, Bugs Life following that narrative. Yeah, you know, and we'll, we'll get into that influence it. as well later yeah. too. Certainly. Well, I think, yeah, that's it. Sort of that, that, that first few in is always it's so charming, so, you know, enriching in its experience. I don't think there was there was any other alternative for it in terms of, of where it would end up. I don't think it, it, it's one of the ones that could ever go underappreciated because, you know, especially in terms of world cinema as a whole, it's so highly regarded. You know, it's Definitely. solidified its spot up there. I mean, it really shows that it transcends culture as well because mm. it is so popular internationally, like Rashomon as well. Um, it is a very Japanese story, obviously, and it's got a lot, it's a lot, there's a lot of Japanese history in there as well, in terms of the period it's set in and everything, and it's all about samurai. It's all about that Japanese history, but I, I think it, it's, the whole idea of it is you have this situation of these farmers, 
and they need to protect their land. And I think that is a kind of it's got a universal kind of message of how we should, you know such destruction shouldn't be happening and trying to work together to fight off such bandits and the fact that these bandits exist in the first place. It, it is. It was a result of certain things that happened at, in the period of the said, which is I think seventeenth century. But um, I'm not an history expert, but there's a little bit on that in that booklet about the history of the film, um, in terms of when it was set. So yeah, I mean, as I, as I said, it's, it kind of breaks cultural boundaries, and that's why it's so well received universally because when people watch it. It is kind of universal in the themes and messages that it's bringing across. I would have to agree with that, and especially with. The whole idea of you know the, the farmer to samurai relationship that they sort of have you know it's not like kurosawa kind of set out to put these samurais on a pedestal even though in the film they are they are the authority they're the people that everyone looks up to as leaders but he also questions the idea of a samurai and we'll get into that a little bit later as well with the themes that reoccur but it's not like these these samurais are tossed in to be these heroes they're almost sort of anti-heroes to begin with i mean yeah. the village was hiding from them as they came up and you know, my female's character asks a lot of questions and sort of really challenges the, the sort of traditionalness and the Japanese tendency of a samurai and sort of breaks that down. And that is kind of broken down, I think, you know, throughout the seven, who are quite different. Yeah. Yeah, they're not the same. They're not, you know, it's not a copy and paste samurai. It's different characters in, in yeah. this one scenario. I mean, while, kind of, while, while some of their appearance, like some of the samurais have more parts than others, but they all do seem to have a personality and their introduction and everything you, you do kind of get a sense of their characters it's nothing really deep in character because it is while it's a long film it actually doesn't explore the characters thoroughly or anything except for the Maifune character and Shimura's character and then the young uh, the young character's name I can't remember right now uh, but uh, I'll remember that name soon um so it does, it does kind of explore the relationship between the samurais and the farmers and gives us a look at the samurai characters and it doesn't it doesn't glorify them that's what we're saying it doesn't glorify them at all um, later on in the film there is lots of consequences and stuff um, another reason the film is just so highly regarded is because of how influential it is um, the plot of the film has been recycled for dozens of films and two popular ones that I can bring up is The Magnificent Seven, which was a western that came out in the 60s, or the late 50s, and it was basically a cut and paste job of the film. And then you have West. A Bug's Life. <laughs> yeah. A Bug's Life is literally, I, I couldn't believe that, I remember reading <laughs> that, and I, don't, I didn't know why I didn't put it together, because A Bug's Life is a very similar scenario, instead of, uh, instead of bandits, it's Hopper and his gang in A Bug's Life. Um, it's just it's just amazing to think a bug's li like a bug's life a Pixar film it's a completely different spectrum yet Sam Samurai it was one of the major influences for it. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy what what is transcending from that and that that really speaks for you know Seven Samurai is such an influential film to kind of come across from cowboy from samurai to cowboys to bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it's almost as if it evolved actually you you break it down like that. <laughs> Uh, and it just it, it transcends time and just has this great great effect I think on world cinema as a whole where yeah. everyone kind of takes their piece from it and, and makes it yeah own, I mean whether it be for Hollywood or next it'll be Ants um, <laughs> well to be honest there's already in that film about Ants isn't there it's called Ants um, so yeah it's such an influential film that's left its legacy in terms of the way it's even filmed and everything it's just incredible stuff and I'll talk more about that once we start talking now about the cinematography. So the cinematography of the film is one of the most surprising things in it, and it's one of the things that blew you away just because of how well it's done. Not just not just the, the the editing and the camera work, but also the whole atmosphere and mise en scene and everything that it creates. You know, all the set designs, the costumes, the props, and you get a real feel uh, for the whole setting. And it's very it's a very gritty, dark kind of film as well. Um, in terms of the locations, everything's very dirty, mucky kind of kind of earthy as well but also there's some nice sweeping shots whenever it's a bright day as well which is very Japanese I think um, so what was your initial reaction to this, you know such scenes as the when the bandits come and everything um, what do you think of the camera work and all that yourself I find it very hard to differentiate the camera work of Seven Samurai to you know classics that get released today because what you know Kurosawa can set out to do 
with you know cinematography in particular and, and capturing this sort of you know this you mentioned gritty it is very gritty but to capture this it, it was so phenomenal to see such camera work and then even such you know added into the you know everything that went into it just all came together and, and, and made it that that's what kind of makes it timeless as well you know yeah. even in the evidence in black and white it you know the amount of effort that went into the editing and the camera work and all really speaks for a high head of its time it was indeed you know and I'm, I'm glad you know it didn't get released in color you know there was the, that that black and white again add the grittiness and and again speaks for its time you need you need to give a it's one of the types of films where I would I would show to someone who's never really given black and white film a chance, you know, it hasn't went down the classic right of cinema. It's one that I would, you know, prep for and say, you know, get check this out and get this yeah. a go because they'd be you know, they'd be pleasantly surprised by I mean, the the only the only reservation someone would have towards it's the length, but honestly yeah. you don't feel it, as we said. Mm. And yeah, I mean Considering the camera work in the film, this is 1954, we don't have a little DSLR like we're using right now to film. Mm. We're talking about big cameras, at least, at least, it would have been at least this big by that. And, you know, it's so dynamic, and that's what's so great about Kurosawa's films. Mm. And we'll talk, I'll get more in depth to the Kurosawa style um, afterwards, because it's just fantastic camera work. Um, I was reading in that little book where it actually talked about some of the camera work and what method Kurosawa used in some of the later scenes where you see all the the bandits running and so it's all this big, the big war between the, the farmers and the, the bandits and what he done was use three cameras to film um, so the action went on, on uninterrupted and then he, he clipped it all together and that's that's kind of a modern day technique but back then mm. since 1954 Japan um, obviously they've had a cinema the, their cinema started in 1915 whatever like everyone else but Back then, I think that would have been very advanced for its time, and it also said it was the most expensive film the company Toho, uh, the company he stayed with basically for all his films, except towards the end for a few. Um, but it was the most expensive film that they ever had, and I think that shows definitely because the visuals is mind blowing, and filming with three ca big cameras as well would have been very tough. And I think one of the most impressive things was the fact that these cameras were out in the rain. Now. Today we have lots of uh, ways to get across um, to stop that issue of rain getting onto the cameras, you know, whether it be like just a little umbrella or an actual case, a, a, a plastic casing to stop it getting wet. But you imagine big giant cameras being used and filmed out in the rain. You know, they literally dug out holes to get the low angles and the low angles is something I'd like to talk about as well. But in general, I think the editing and everything's ahead of its time too because, yeah. you know, Today everything's done on computers. Back then it was all snip snip with the scissors, and um, piecing it all together. And it's amazing to think all this has been pieced together. And for such a long film as well, it must have took ages to edit as well. Definitely, and you got to keep in mind this is nineteen fifty four Hollywood. Like you said, this is in Japan. From the coordination to how you know the whole entire film was shot, from you know the use of horses, the the battle in the end, and the rain. It's just it's something that. I bet a lot of people at that time in Japan, the filmmakers weren't comfortable making. Definitely. It's not something they wanted to kind of jump forward with. I think what sets Kurosawa apart in that sense is he's sort of a risk taker. You know, yeah. he, he wants to set boundaries. He wants to kind of leap forward and, and, and take the next step forward and, and try something, you know, even though the sort of odds are against him. You know, he, he doesn't have the funding of Hollywood or never mind, you know, the, the technological advances they might have had then. You know that they're nothing compared to what we have today, mm -hmm. but you know it's a, it's such a step forward. It would have been anyway if he was on such you know like a Hollywood set, but he, you know he could take matters into his own hands, which is yeah. very I mean, commendable. I, I can only imagine what he could do if he had a huge budget mm. today. He could make something absolutely breathtaking. Mm. Um, yeah, the film at the time it, it's very as you say he's risky. It was very risky to make such a huge film, but because of the success he had with Rashomon, um, he was already known at this point as the greatest Japanese director of all time internationally he had such a he was held up so highly yet he had only made something like six films not even um, that's the only reason he, would have, he got to make Seven Samurai uh, because they trusted him they thought okay he's he, the chances are that we might, this might work well because it was way past the budget that people were used to uh, the comp Toho was used to funding and it really does show the effort and creativity the, the imagination and force of an Indian really shows and in terms of Akira Kurosawa style there's a lot of traits in there that are similar to the other films 
yet you know it, it's it's quite evident when you watch you know Ran and having that comparison of in particular the battle scenes you yeah. know that that that's sort of that panning over and the horse riding and the, that style I think once he did take that step forward and, and using it was something that he kind of mastered and you know made his own he took that and then sort of said alright this is you know part of his his makeup his you know what his foundation of what you know a good samurai film is I think that kind of got added in you know he made it his own which was which was very impressive for its time as well yeah um, the style of his films you know similar to Ram that's three decades later and he's still using mm -hmm. those same kind of camera techniques and in Ram it's, it's, it, he takes it to the next level of course as well but you can see a lot of Kurosawa's uh, usual themes and how do you say traits that he that yeah. is in his films you know his entire style of filmmaking um, Hidden Fortress and Ram they both have those low, he loves doing these low angles these low angles of the horses running past and the action's happening people falling off the horses and it's a really common shot you see them running and then you see the person hitting the ground there's so many of those shots in both Ran and Hidden Fortress and then Seven Samurai is the third and you could, there's probably a couple others that have those shots that I'm not thinking of right now but I mean he's a very diverse filmmaker he's got these samurai films now he's got films like Akiru but I'll not get into that too much mm. but you can really see his auteur that's the word I need to use um, he's an auteur filmmaker and you can see a lot of his themes and stylistic devices that are very Kurosawa another one of the Kurosawa's favourite things to do is use rain in his films in Rashomon we see it and it gives a real dramatic effect it gives it that you know there's a, a lot of pessimism that come out, come out a lot and in Seven Samurai it really adds to the drama and the grittiness of, of the whole scene towards the end when it's raining and it really gives a dramatic impact to the whole film and I just show I mean rain's used a lot in films nowadays but I think the way the way Kurosawa does it is unflinching and just mm. it's just fantastic to see um, it's amazing how effective rain can be to add drama to a scene yeah and then to see like a massive battle you know consistent of all this rain and it sort of locks us into this scene, you know, where we're kind of, it, it, it becomes a bit more, a bit more hopeless or a bit, you know, more dramatical, like you were saying, when the rain kind of hits down. And to capture that, it is impressive for a start to do it at that time, you know, with the, the type of camera equipment and stuff he had, but also adding to the story, it does have yeah. a big impact, you know, it does come in and... and yeah, because it's reflecting, it's kind of yeah. reflecting on the story, because very early on there is rain whenever um, the farmers are going, and they yeah. think it's hopeless finding the samurai, and there's rain mm -hmm. in one moment, because, you know, at this point they're, they're kind of like, oh, we're not going to get doing this, and they're, they're, it, there's a sense of dread through the use of rain, so he really does use it in a way that mirrors the character's feelings, and that's what good cinematography mm -hmm. is all about. Certainly, and even in dialogue, rain is brought up, I mean, when, when Mifune is making one of his speeches about... He pretty much calls out the farmers, you know, saying that they fear the rain, they fear the drought, and all these different things. I mean, even you know, with, with such, the, the people we know best in this film are the farmers. You know, they they're who we kind of we, we get the introduction with, and whose side we're kind of on, and we're kind of you know, vouching for. But rain in its entirety, like that, you know, had an effect on them as well. So when getting into that mind state, you know, the the unpredictability that the farmers would have had with it, and it just had. You know such a negative connotation back then you know they bring drought and you know it's something yeah. that they would rather avoid it and not just as the cinematography great like mm -hmm. you can just see um the whole gritty look the film has all the costumes all of it was most of it was filmed on location and um, that was one of the things toho didn't want them to do because of how expensive it was mm -hmm. but when you're in that village you really feel like that village has been there for years hundreds yeah. of years or whatever and I think just the whole set designs and everything and the costumes and the props, just absolutely fantastic stuff. So moving on then to the performances in the film. So the performances, you know, excellent, you know, excellent, excellent performances from, you know, on all round cast. I think the chemistry was great between the samurais and the sort of the makeup of how they kind of came together was brilliant again. I mean, the, the apprentice samurai yeah, his, na his name's actually Katsushiro. Yeah, you have... Helpful. A great sort of adolescence performance for him and as he's growing up and maturing as well as Mifune, who, who kind of struggles with, with drinking and, and coming in and, and making their appearances as well. I think, even though there's not much characterization, I think the performances, you know, are, are 
so strong. Yeah, yeah, I indeed. mean, it does keep the yeah. film together. You wouldn't, you wouldn't enjoy it. most. That's one of the most important elements to a film, not mm. just the the direction, but characters on the screen. That's what cinema is all about, to be honest. And my Fune is just a champion in this film. One of his yeah. best performances. Um, the energy he brought to the role is just fantastic, and he also has a comedy element to it as mm. well. He, he, there's times there's very serious moments in the film. Um, with him talking, but and he, it's also quite tragic as well. You get you get a sense of his backstory later on. We're gonna talk about that soon as well. But he's just such a crazy character, and he's, he has this drinking problem. He he's a, a very funny character. You know, mm. whenever they're doing the thing, hitting over the head, they actually yes. end up doing that to him because he's the last samurai to join in. They've got six yeah. so far. Then they test this one other guy, and he's drunk, and then uh, keep. No, no, a Kanbai, yeah, Kanbai says a good samurai would never get that drunk, and then obviously he gets hit, he doesn't react to it at all. Um, a good samurai would have responded to it, drunk or not, so he got mm. too drunk. Um, so he gets hit over the head and he gets really angry and everything. It's quite a funny scene to watch, yeah. Um, and that's when you first start to see this character as a very troubled kind of guy. There's a, there's, there's a lot that, that gets explored in the film with that character. You have to kind of try and understand his mindset and his background just by the way yeah. he acts and responds to things and the way he talks about the farmers and everything we learn about his backstory. Um, I think his backstory is fascinating once you start to learn. It is, yeah. He's certainly the most flawed, at least, you know. He's yeah. the most... He's, he's the least samurai in the in the samurai group. He's the, the furthest away from yeah, one. Yeah, and that's... Just about qualifies, you know. Yeah. And that's, that ties in again with what we're saying is how... Uh, Kurosawa doesn't try to glorify anybody. He shows these characters for all their flaws. Mm, certainly, certainly, we, we we get that with you know the apprentice samurai and Rifune. But you know, a lot of things are 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 taken apart and kind of discovered with you know they all have a learning curve to an extent. You know, in each well, you know, the wiser they are, you know, how young they are, that you've got this big matchup and and all these performances go well so well together. In chemistry, you know, and, and and become very, you know, heart, heart woman overall, you know, as a cohesive piece. So very, very well coordinated as well from everyone in the cast, you know, from the, even the bandits who do a great job on horseback and falling off, yeah, and risking a lot, a lot of great ground. stunts as well, yeah, and there. Um, but the performances really keep it together, and even from the the, the hopelessness and the farmers very early on, you really, mm. you don't know much about these characters, but, um, the brief brief time that we're with them we don't we get to know the characters just through the reactions you know whenever you, there's a really sad one within the film one of my favorite parts is when the rice gets stolen and he's picking mm. the little grains off the ground that's probably the one of the saddest moments in the right. film it's just such a sad image as well because you really it's the rice is very symbolic you know for that struggle because that's the only mm. source of food and he's sitting trying to pick it up one by one how will we feed them now he's, mm. talking, he's talking about the samurai at the time and the, the, the hopeless look on his face, you know, close to tears, basically in tears. And then mm. the, the camera moves out and he's kind of in this dark room. And it's really, again, the cinematography and everything that Kurosawa does and the framing. It's all about the framing. Mm. And that kind of captures how it just get, get that negative mood that he's in and mm. the hopelessness in that character. But which later uh, turns out for the better. But there's just something so sad about that scene because of yeah how much it meant to him because it was... It was sort of a life or death kind of thing, you know. He need he needed that race. He needed to feed the feed summer. He needs mm. to get the summer. This mission that they're on is really vital mm. because it's all about their survival and struggle. Yeah, and and to come across that in you know as a performance, it kind of it reminded me of the scene you know not too much before it, but when the villagers kind of get word that the samurais are coming, a father sort of takes it on his own part to cut his daughter's hair yeah. to ensure that you know she will not fall for the samurai. You know, so he's kind of looking after his family and. And even their performances then, the sort of sheer, you know, hopelessness of, of, of what's ahead of them, you know, where he just, you know, he has to cut his own daughter's hair, he's, he's kind of trembling in fear, and, and, and you have that sort of human element to it, you know, as, as his daughter runs away screaming this, you know, this villagers, you know, chasing after, and the, the rest of the village sort of looking, looking horror, as he's, you know, to forcefully remove his, his own daughter's hair, and that kind of sets the film up then to kind of, you know, that the band that's come and attack, you know, that, that sets this dark tone of what's ahead. Yeah. For the villagers to endure. Yeah, but in general, the performance in the film are absolutely mind blowing. So now we can move on to the actual themes of the film and just get right in there and talk about everything. 
So really, the first thing that you can talk about when it comes to the themes in the film is it shows hardship and struggle and the devastation of things like not so much war. Well, yes, yes, war, but not directly war, mm. but trying to protect yourselves from forces that are gonna try and kill you if you if you get what I mean. You know, these evil forces coming in, which are the bandits in this case, mm. and it's really about that kind of struggle, wanting to keep peace and trying to survive in this world. And again, that's the sort of thing that's explored a lot in Japanese cinema. Yeah, it is indeed, and the thing about you know Seven Samurai as a film is. It's very hard to sort of pick the hero to the anti-hero because everyone is villainized at a certain point. The farmers have a history of killing samurai and, and, and have hidden, you know, different bits of armor. Meanwhile, the samurai have came in or you then have, you know, the, the disapproval of the villagers who, you know, think maybe think wrongly of them and what they're prepared to do and don't trust them. And, you know, obviously the bandits then, you know, they're, they're the ones who want to attack. They're probably the most ruthless as seen. And it just seems that the, the, there's between no right or wrong between all these different you know people and and that that's really sort of you know covered as a theme as, as it's whole yeah you know, it's quite good that, and evil yeah really it's a good and evil. morality as well like, yeah. you know it's like a seesaw because there's you know sometimes it'll switch maybe it's the, the villagers are in the right then the samurai you know they look up to them yeah. the samurai find out about you know the history of the village at least you know they have they have you know killed and and hunted, you know, wounded samurai who've lost in previous battles to, to achieve that armor and things. And it's interesting to see that, to see the the shift of, of who's right and who's wrong and, and does it really matter in the end because, you know, there's, there's that overall human theme as well of flaws, which is which is quite fascinating. Yeah, I mean, the film really does just explore morality and, and mm. good and evil, you know, because that's what it is all about because you're, you're, on, you're on the side of the village because they're so helpless against the bandits and they're the evil characters and mm -hmm. um, it really does explore that very well in the film and it's it's got all the, all the flaws and the characters and everything and it, it has a lot to say about humanity itself because there's no such thing as a perfect society and these characters exactly because it's a human thing you know these characters want to do the best they can and the farmers and everything they've done bad things too but they're and the samurais they don't have a very good um reputation either because they've done bad things but these samurais seem to be trying to do what they can and they, they seem to be the better of the samurai that the, mm. uh, the, the farmers uh, came to know and hate but they, they want to try and help them out because that's that, that's, that's the whole point of can be that, that's what his mission really is you see that very early on you know, when he's mm. shaving his hair um, if you'd like to talk about that scene yeah that that is a you know, an eye-opening scene as well, and I was actually about to touch on that with another theme that kind of ties into this scene and continues on throughout the film. So with children and the use of children, I think that is a consistent theme throughout Seven Samurai, and it starts before even the Seven have banded, you know, in a group, and that's with, yeah, the shaving of her scene right before, when we come to find that a baby's actually been kidnapped, by, you know, an antagonist, a beggar, or, or, or someone along those lines have actually taken this baby and um, that, that entire village or city has been sort of shaken up by that event and they've called upon the samurai and, you know, through his crafty ways of wanting to shave his head and then get into the the monk's robes to sort of, you know, cast out this person to, to save the baby, I think is the start of that sort of theme of vulnerability, you know, because later down the line... Yeah. That's actually, a few nice character now, dressing now, the children. Yeah, because now, now that I've thought about it, that's actually a really symbolic scene because mm. you've got this force, you've got the child, someone who is innocent, mm. and you've got this bad guy. So that really reflects on the villager situation, you know, that yeah. the, the child represents the village. And the, the, there's a great, I love the way it's filmed as well, when he runs out and he, he's been stabbed and he hits the ground. The slow motion, mm. the slow motion shots are great as well. I don't think yeah. many people would have done that back then either. The way that was filmed in Japan, anyway, and that really it does become a symbol to the film, and I'm only yeah. I'm only realizing that now that 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 does parallel completely with the whole it situation. It does, yeah. That that you know that is a, a preview of what's to come, essentially yeah. for the village. Yeah, and even the fact that he's wearing a monk's robes, you know, what, yes. what is a monk? It's a, it's a time of innocence, yeah. you know. Yeah, peace certainly. and you know, wanting to go in and uh, while a monk wouldn't go in and kill someone. Yeah. Um, that's what the samurai does. And, and that kind of brings up yeah. the question: Does it is it worth it to save a baby? You know, he, 
he even goes against sort of samurai ways. Cool, I mean, the yeah. samurai, you know, samurai isn't supposed to, in defeat a samurai as, as we learn is to is to cut off the back of his hair, in when he is being defeated, um, he was willing to just shave his whole hair off to see if this baby and to sort of break the samurai code to do so was and also a, another major question that's raised and yeah. a theme that's parallel throughout it. So you know, interesting themes going on there that you might not notice upon first watch, but. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's one thing with the film Samurai Codes, and that's that's mm-hmm. one thing that this film breaks away from other samurai films as well. I think because it's really kind of exploring what it means to be a samurai, and kind of criticizing it and mm-hmm. questioning it, questioning it really. That's what it's really doing. It's kind of getting down to what it mean, what it is to be a samurai, and why these codes are there, and breaking the codes. Yeah, I have to agree in regards to. You know the subjectivity of being a samurai and you know what's upheld and what's you know enforced upon especially in you know japanese cinema you know you've got a lot of uh, uh, films that will touch on that however seven samurai kind of takes a different turn you know when it sort of starts to break away from those and and, and question them and and that is probably even through mifune's you know uh, humor humor with the kids and stuff you know you've got this 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 big scary samurai, but who yeah. can joke around with the children? Yeah, I love those scenes. You know, he's yeah. impersonating the old guy and everything, and he, he really is a comic relief to the film. Mm. And I love that balance, and that's what there's a brilliant balance of. That's another big theme of the film is tragedy and comedy, and the go hand in hand always. So it's, it is kind of a tragedy comedy at times, um, because sometimes in the film you're laughing at the way he's getting on, the way the the, the, the funny characters entertaining the kids, and there's something really talking about that. I'll talk about that yeah. that after because it kind of mm. reflects on. I he because he he obviously has a thing with children, doesn't he? You know, he yes, yeah, he because does. of his personal backstory himself. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say because I rambled there. Tragedy and comedy—that's what I was talking about. Yes, back to what the point was. Tragedy and comedy is what I was talking about, and you know, there's times where you're laughing, and then all of a sudden, the whole film is completely dramatic, and it's your your jaw is dropping because of the drama. Um, whenever the samurai and everything die, uh, some of them are killed. You know, it's really dramatic moments, and yeah. it's got that real balance. At times, you're you're in awe, and then you're kind of laughing with the film mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, kind of relating back to that sort of seesaw of emotions that you know you kind of like you, life you're itself. cast upon. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. You you you're, you're given those moments of relief sometimes, and you're kind of brought back into this very real and visceral world uh, yeah. that these people live in. These villagers are kind of trapped in, and uh, isn't that sort of transparent when um when they actually finally get to the village you know the samurai stand there waiting to be praised and you know they get none they kind of realize oh no we we might be you know anti-heroes here and they're kind of they're disgraced you know of their names and their authority and that that was very interesting to see yeah and it shows how vulnerable and scared Mm. the the villagers are as well you know they're just terrified the samurai might be there to help them and they're still kind of intimidated yes yeah because the samurai at this uh, at this point in history you know they would have been considered a threat and kind of frightening to people mm. um, and what I really, I really want to start talking about is the Mafune character and his backstory because I was just about to talk about it and mm. um, you can't see the way he relates to kids can't you, you know, because it sure ties into his backstory if you would like to talk about that yeah sure well we come to find that, that Mifune was you know his his character was the you know the son of a farmer so this this sort of personal story you know conflicts with you know what he's going through there and then you know where he has that sort of that that obligation and that need to to even though he may not like to accept it sometimes but he will you know be in the the villagers favor and helping them and training them and going through and you know entertaining the kids and and giving up you know sacrificing the rice and all these different things that happen he, he, he's, he's he's quite lovable in that regard he is but he also has his own flaws that he's to do with that that is a product of his past too so he's Again, he, he has this, you know, up and down of, of emotion and and the selfishness sometimes as well. I mean, he's arguably one of the reasons why one of the other, the, one of the seven of the samurais had been killed, you know, by pretty much, you know, going out of his post and pretend to be abandoned. Yeah. You know, that was something that he had to, and you know, you can see, you can see him crying. He's one of the most, certainly one of the most yeah, vulnerable gonna, bring up one samurais, scene. isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. It's going to bring up the scene, you know, yeah. when you see him at his most vulnerable and the mm. rain again adds to the crime in the scene. That's indeed. And you, you, before he even says the line, mm. you know exactly that. Uh, yeah. Let me start talking about it first before I get into that. So 
things are happening they go and there's this little house and they need to go in there's a mother a child and the father and they want to rescue them the the father has died and the mother has the child in arms she dies hands the, the child to the movie night character and yeah just the look on his face before he says the line you know that that child has some sort of link with them and that must have been his history because we we i think we did we heard before that he was the son of a farmer and yeah. instantly you know this must this is stirring him in the soul because it's his scenario and then he says this was me i am this baby this is what happened to me yeah and that that's a really that's probably the most powerful moment in the film for me because he's got this child in arms and he's crying and the rain it's during it's during this whole war Mm. and it's kind of an exploration of his character at that point in the film yeah i mean the the previous scene he was holding the sword from that and then to holding the baby yeah he was getting shot at and just you know, Do, that's a real duality there isn't yeah, it yeah he's the last person you kind of want to give the baby to you know because he's, he's been for so much in that yeah. regard and you know he's one of the most fierce fighters at least out of the seven summer yeah. who would, would take chances <clears throat> and you know he is a sensitive character as well yeah. um, but he, he kind of masks it with a ruggedness you know when mm. he said I hate people that pity themselves in the scene with the mm. old woman whenever she wants to as she says I have nothing else to live for Mm, yes he he is he, he seems insensitive but that's actually a mask for how sensitive he really is as a person yeah yeah honest. true he does he's almost has problems with masculinity you know and he likes the the sort of boast that manliness but you know as well as flaws are very evident as well as people people understand that and realize that i mean when the flag is being made everyone else is represented by a circle he's, and represented, he's represented by, represented a, by triangle. a triangle which is you know which is th- that that kind of shows the humor again in between in the chemistry between the seven samurai that uh, i found was great but also sets him apart really you know because he is he's different he is different yeah and that's what's uh, that's what's so accessible about the film it combines mm. that comedy and that yes. action it's got it does really have everything a film mm-hmm. a, a good film has doesn't it it's got it's got a really good balance it's a really and everything that a good entertaining kind of film has because yeah. it, it is it's it's kind of it's not a light watch but it's not a harrowing kind of film because it balances everything and it, it's easily rewatchable too i mean i only watched it last year and i wanted to see it again very quickly um because because it's just so entertaining and rewarding it is, it is indeed and, and seeing a second then you know we, we can talk now a bit more in depth about the characters and especially the yeah. Mount Fune character i mean we've said so much about it already mm. What do you think in particular of the, the romantic, you know, you know, sub narrative that was existing there between the premise? Yeah, and that is, that is something I would like to talk about actually because, um, I'm not a huge fan of the romance story. I didn't feel much for it in terms of a, a sympathy or a you know I didn't feel much warmth in it because the, the film often forgets and it forgets to turn back to it. And while the film's so long, it doesn't actually explore the romance that much. But you forgive it for it because you know why it's there, yeah. and it does kind of look into the character's feelings, doesn't it? And it the does, youthful character as well, doesn't yeah. it? It does. It, it's sort of a, a a growing up for him at least. You know where it's an interesting scene. I think at least you know where he he challenges masculinity as well to an extent. I mean, when he comes across the guard at first, you've got this. You've got the apprentice, you know, samurai, the youngest of the group, and then you also have that this girl, you know, who. You know, appears the appears like a boy. You know, due to her father cutting their hair, sort of in this field together, and it's just it's very blissful, and it's away from all this darkness. It's just a way out of the way, and it it's almost this this heavenly and peaceful, you know, place that they both of them meet each other, and you know, when when he when he's kind of going and picking his own flowers and seeing that, seeing this brighter side of life, and that kind of shows his he's more blank he's more untroubled you know he hasn't seen as much he's not as wise in that regard which is a good thing almost you know and that's he doesn't know what harsh reality yeah, is in a way yeah, he's, yeah. he's kind of escaping from that and his, his adolescence and youth allows him to do that you know as he sit, he, he goes and he really does you know break away from being a samurai and all and, and yeah. pick flowers and, and it goes out whenever, whenever he's picking the flowers and he lies down and everything there's yes. something very dreamlike and I, that's probably the, that's probably the brightest coloured yeah. scene in the, in, in the film so because so. Because with everything else going on, and then it returns to this, you know, the tranquility. It goes mm-hmm. into a tranquil kind of mood, and then that's when the romance kind of narrative starts, and yeah. that's there because it adds to the drama throughout the film, and the, the con- it creates conflict, which is what cinema and storytelling is all about. It's all about conflict, because um, that creates conflict later on whenever the father finds out and everything. 
Yeah, it certainly does, and it also adds more vulnerableness, and that he has more to lose. And more humanity. Village. So yeah, right. yeah, certainly, and and that's that's a great way I think to represent youth is is love and through this love in a, a vulnerable position you know where he also w- would sacrifice his food and give to her or, or, or give to the grandmother you know who was lonely and and that's that's a very important scene as well i think you know where the old the old woman sort of gets revenge when they capture a bandit i think that, that scene that scene like, yes. actually kind of haunts me when you yeah. see the this old granny and she's got the yeah you know, uh, the something rake. the rake yeah. thing that she's gonna get it's, it's, there's something so scary about that yeah. scene because she's so old and she's just struggling, but she's still gonna do it anyway. She's 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 ready to do it, and that's her way of getting revenge. And it's one of those moments where you're like, I don't blame her. Yeah. It, what, she seems like someone has went through a lifetime of trauma. Yeah, she was and very suicidal when we meet her. Cause you have that line. Um, so one of the one of the summary says, "Let let her get revenge in her yeah. own way," and I would. I mean, all did you know? And there there was something scary about it though. I, I can't really describe the yeah. feeling whenever you see her, literally kind of crawling towards him to, yeah. you don't actually see her attacking him or anything but just seeing the suggestion of it again it's just so powerful yeah. you'd think she'd be afraid of this mob you know they're surrounding this bandit and you almost but she's been through so much bandit. yeah, yeah she's, been, she's been through so much she, she's think. nothing is going to bring her down now yeah I think she, she would want to die and then it was so that sort of shows more you know darkness of humanity when we've seen her in that state you know where she was just plagued by this this need to get revenge and, and yeah it was very haunted indeed you know something yeah, that sticks uh, with you it is a really film. dark film it, it does have those really dark moments and yeah it's it, we're really breaking it down but you don't really notice that the first time you watch it and all these themes and everything that's, that makes it so great um but it's amazing to think it is so popular and influential as dark as mo- the moments can be and the, the philosophy behind it all as well and how dark the, the whole philosophy of the film is but also you know we can talk about the ending now as well and really the yeah. what mood and that's whenever it all ties in again with the whole philosophy of the film yeah the ending is is, is one that again will stick with you and i think it, it's it's more of a tragedy ending as opposed to a resolution you know it wasn't like they it was a celebration or any any sort of happiness hinted at the end it was more like everyone had lost due yeah, to it was, it was, killed. yeah it was happiness with compromise yeah, it yeah. Was success with compromises because at this point, even the it was so, it's so sad seeing the Mayfune character die mm-hmm. as well. You know, that's a really sad yeah. moment. Then you have the other like three samurai in total that died, mm-hmm. um, and then a couple of villagers as well. And it's really great when you see one. I think it's the young. It, it is. It's the young samurai, isn't it? Um, Katsushiro when he Katsushiro. says, "Where's all the bandits?" And then, uh, Kanbai says, "They're all dead." And sort of breaks he's down. screaming. He mm-hmm. has a bit of a breakdown in that moment because he's he's just so um sort of relieved yeah so relieved now now it's over but with the rain and everything you're thinking to yourself that's it over but everyone's not cheering or anything yeah and the next scene obviously they, they are kind of celebrating but the end there is an ending with compromise and it shows it shows a resolution but one that still has backlash and trouble and it really that i think it's a really realistic kind of crew ending mm. it's not this happy hollywood kind of conclusion yeah. to the story where everyone's happy because I mean, they're going to get on with life, and that's kind of exemplified so, in the next scene. Yeah. I would say the ending in, in particular is a loss of innocence as well. You know, between... There was a lot of innocence to begin with that was slowly being broken down, you know, through the character breakdowns and through their their trials that they, they, they went through and endured in the whole entire film. And that sort of famous last line of, you know, we've lost again, and then, you know, seeing the graves of... Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that is sort of the, the, the dark compromise that they had to make in that way and that's sort of the way of being a samurai is to is to have that risk you know but but there was such a human side to it as well when when they realized that they actually lost in the end you know due to losing that friendship that was so well built you know throughout the entire film you know for the journeys that they went through to get to the village and then you know defending the village strategically i think that they built this this great friendship you know as as flawed as it was and, and it was very sad to see that sort of broken up for the deaths of those samurai and, and particularly the villagers as well i mean it is a, a fantastic conclusion um and then it, uh, that ties in the film as a whole it is showing this absolute struggle you know trying to get rid of evil and these forces evil forces 
And that is why it's so universal, because you understand this situation. You've got a little society, a little group of people that live together. Farmers and whatnot, they're trying to struggle and survive, um, get along with life. And then you've got the bandits that are threatening their living, which causes them to go to measures to try and protect their lives. And that results in, it's still tragic, but now you know they're going to live a bit better now. Mm. And you see that in the end scene whenever you have that line and everything. And they're kind of celebrating at this point now that it's yeah. all over. And it's, it's happiness with a compromise. And that's how the film ends. And I think that's why the film sticks with so many people and it speaks to so many people. And that's behind its success. I agree. Yeah, that's you know, as a nutshell. In a nutshell, it is you know from start to finish you know an undeniable classic i think masterpiece anyone yep, who hasn't seen it definitely needs to definitely check it out i'm sorry for the spoilers in particular if you've watched all the whole entire yeah i mean you just <laughs> ruined it for yourself <laughs> well in fact you haven't really because yeah. it is an experience talking about it doesn't do it justice you have yeah. to see it yourself um so we're just gonna wrap everything up now it was great doing this video again discussing it mm -hmm. um We've certainly explored a lot of the stuff that's in the film and again you can always talk more and more about it so drop your comments down below if you've seen the film hope you enjoyed it um and if you have anything else to say any feedback to give go ahead and do it below if you haven't seen the film yet and you've watched it all go and do it now i hope the spoilers won't they won't drag your experience down um so any final thoughts that you'd like to say about the film or the video i'm happy enough we discussed everything we need to i think yeah we just love to hear from you as well thanks for having me back yep, on everybody and um, if you didn't know what this was already it is a sword so all i can say is everybody is mite idarakia arigato gazimas thanks for watching thank you i actually got it wrong a bit we're not samurais <laughs> okay figure it yeah it's, it's not gonna work just put it down. We tried. <sighs> Goodbye, everybody. See ya.